Well, joining me today is Isaac Libby. He's the owner of Best Buy Metals. They don't have one location. They got three or four. How many locations are, do you have now? We actually have lo eight locations at the moment, yes, sir. Eight locations? Yes, sir. Is that mind-boggling? I never really thought we'd, we'd go quite that with it. We just, one step at a time, you know, start out real small and just, just thankfully just grew. Yes, sir. What's the, what's the idea of when you got seven, you say, hey, let's get eight. I mean, what brought the eighth one? I don't know. I'm really not sure if I'm smart or stupid, but we just keep adding on. But I, I tell you, the we end up usually just looking for areas that seem to have that need, and usually we're already delivering the products to that area for a period of time, and then we're like, well, you know what? We really just need to make it more convenient for our customers, the contractors, mm -hmm. to be able to get there closer without without having to come to this other location. So usually we build off of off the other one. Is it mostly metals? It really is. Uh, it's a good variety of different metal. You know, you've got um, from commercial to residential to you have board and batten for the walls. You know, we don't do any vinyl siding anymore, but we do have the board and batten and lap siding. It's all made out of metal, but it is all metal. Yes, sir. I think I remember back in the day, we used to buy some vinyl siding from y'all. Was That's that a true. thing? It is, yeah. We did that for a good period of time. i tell you the truth, <clears throat> it, it, was, it worked out good at the time, but as we... We ended up needing more space, and we did more manufacturing, and it's just a better niche for us to stick with the metal. And so we kind of, that's when we just, we just let that go on out and, and move directly only towards metal. I used to use this crew all the time. They bought the vinyl siding from you. Their last names were Zimmerman or Zipper, Zimmerman. What are, I'm trying to think of his name. They were a really good crew. I think. Sounds familiar. We've had. Had several good I think one there. of them died and the other one went to jail. <laughs> yeah, boy. But but they were really good crew. Yeah. Zimmerman, I think, was his name. Oh, okay. I can't replace right off the bat. I know we, we, we did move a lot of vinyl at one time. I'd but. say that vinyl siding is one of those things that's, uh, at, at the time, it was good, but now it's probably sold everywhere. That is true, yeah. And I'll tell you, we really, we look for something that's going to be durable, never touch again, not having to do with, you know, the metal cracking it. And, and so many people's going to that board and bat, and, and that's really what caused us to get the, the equipment to roll the board and bat. And it's all metal, but it's got the wood grain pattern, and uh, you still still the lap siding, but it's all metal now, and we could do it however long you need it. So we just kind of went that direction. Yes. So, you know, when you think of metal, you think of the barn with a galvanized roof, that's got yes, the nails, the screw holes rotted out around it, and everybody loves to look at it, but they don't really want that on their house because of the... But the old galvanized roofing, or tin roofing, right? What was it first, tin? A lot of them did call it tin. You know, the old 5V panel, the two foot wide, yep. that's what you see the most of as far yep. as from years back. And so that was, that went out. Wonder when that. wonder when they started making that. You know, there's some of that. I, I, could, I couldn't tell you the exact, but some of that's from, I mean, way back. I think it's from the, from, from the original you see me on, on barns and houses. that. And uh, But you're right. There's a lot of change since then, for sure. What would that have been, like 18-something, I guess? I would think so. Who wonder who the first person that said, hey, let's make this metal and put it on the roof. You know what? You got me wondering now. I'm going to research when I get home. Because you see a lot of side. that on Gunsmoke, even. Yeah, that's right. And it was 1860s, so it had mm -hmm. to have been. Oh, yeah. And then I guess along came galvanized. Yes, sir. Which is really good. Yes, sir. And they, and they get galvanized, and they get the galvaloom, where it's got the aluminum mixed in the zinc, so you don't have to worry about the rusting and all that. So That came along afterwards, yeah. Later. Yes, sir. So there's a lot of galvaloom out there. A lot of galvaloom. And now they've gone so far with the paint systems, too, you know, when we even, even when we first opened uh, 21 years ago, they the paint systems was a 25 year warranty 
and now the paint system's even gone a long ways now so where you got a 40-year warranty and it's not just the warranty it's actually the actual what they put in it to, for so to last and, and not to worry about the fading and all that so they keep improving going a long ways with it what's that cry like what are they call it cry like cry yeah. cry nice metal roofing yeah kind of kind of yeah, yeah. kind of yeah that's that's the paint that baked on and it ain't coming off. That's right. Yeah, it's a really good system. You see that a lot with standing seam going with Kynar. And um and it's 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 some of the newer stuff that's out there for sure. One thing I found interesting, sand standing seam is uh is not just it can mean a lot of things standing standing seam. Yeah, it really can. Yes, yeah, sir. There is so many varieties of standing seam. We have, um, and, and we've rolled roll for them several ourselves. Some's commercial, some's residential. But you got the one inch, what we what we call a Titan Lock 100, one inch tall. It's got the built on flange. It's primarily used for residential. It's a really good panel. But then you can go on up to an inch and a half, you know, that has the, the Titan Lock 150, 150, and it's got the clip as well. And, and then you got um, you got other ones that instead of the built-on strip for the nail flange, they have clip system to allow it to move and contract more on the, in, on larger buildings mm -hmm. or if they have to you know do longer panels. And then they go right on up to you know three inch tall. That's that's when you know some of the warehouses are practically flat roofs, and so they need a taller rib to let that water come on off there faster without it getting up over the ribs. So, mm -hmm. and in all these panels, we got them in. You know, 19, 20 different colors, just, and you got different options, 26 gauge or 24 gauge. 29 gauge is primarily on the tough red panel, not so much the standing seam, but. The, the higher right. the rating, is that the thicker? The, yes, that's correct. Yes, so sir. the 29 would be, who would use that? Well, the, well let, me, let me back up and say that the 24, the 24 is a thicker. So okay. the, that, so I uh, answered it wrong. Yeah. So 24 is thicker, so the, the 29, the 29 will use that a lot in the tough rib, the three foot wide panel, which you see on. That's like you buy it. You buy it Lowe's and you're going to put an accent behind the counter or something. It's kind of a yeah. accent thing, but it's not really that. The 29 will work on residential on the three foot, um, and you see a lot of that. But now the, the reason you can't do it on the standing seam is because the oil can. And, you know, you want to go thicker for sure on standing mm -hmm. seam. You got a lot tighter pattern and you don't have a rib every nine inches. The three foot wide is a, a rib every nine inches, so you ain't got to worry about oil cannon. So 29 is still sufficient for that. But in the standing seam, most of the time, quite often it's a 16 inch wide panel and it don't have a rib in the middle. So if it's not thicker, you'll see ripples, especially when the light hits it. It don't hurt the integrity of the panel. But as far as looks goes, you want to go on up thicker, 26 or 24, or you'll 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 see that. What about hell damage? Would that, would that Heard a uh, 29 gauge? I've seen very little. And you know, I remember back uh, when we had some in Udawal, got a, a lot of large, really large hail, and they had a few dings on some of the roofs there, but it takes a massive size uh, to really put a dent in that. And for a few minutes, too. That's I'm right. Sure. Yeah. No, no, it'd be, it'd be harder to do that than it would a car. For it'd sure. Have to, a car for sure. would get it easier. That's great. Partly because it's, most of the time they're on a solid surface, and so it, it, right, it there's can't. No, just, there's nothing. That, the car's empty underneath, and you can see those dings all through it. But it, most of the time, you don't see anything. You know, especially versus a regular shingle, it could rip off little pieces. But a metal, I've never seen it go through it. But I've just seen. I have seen it. Some huge stuff. Put little dings in it before. You know, I was walking with uh, one of these old, old, old time builders. I used to talk to them a lot. We walked by a house, and he said, well, this house doesn't have felt on it. I said, well, how, how do you know? He said, well, you can look at the splash box and see all the granules on the splash box. I said, what does that mean? He said, well, that felt's not to keep the roof from leaking. It's to keep the, give the roof some absorption. And when, it, when the granules come off, it's because there's no, no shock absorber of the felt. And every time I walk by a splash block now, I look. <laughs> it calls you to look. I just yeah. calls me to look. Yeah. They definitely recommend a barrier. We do a lot of synthetic underlayment, you know, that mm -hmm. goes out the door for that. But 
or the felt paper is fine, a 30-weight felt paper, but what they uh, referring to the gravel. What we found is on a shingle roof, if they leave one, if there's just one layer, they could leave it on there as long as there's not soft places or rotten. Mm -hmm. But they still recommend to put that barrier between the two, uh, put it on top of the shingles, trim all the way around so you don't see any shingles, put mm -hmm. that barrier, either 30 weight felt paper or underlayment. And mainly because the contract, the expansion and contraction, because that metal does move a little bit. And if it's got that gravel on the backside, it's just working on it. Yeah. And so really in order to keep the warranty on the metal, they do that that barrier of some sort is is recommended. Or well, they call that non non granular underlayment. I think they call it non granular or something like that. You know, That's you can hear it. You can hear a roof move it a little bit. You can hear some of that crackling in the, if it's real yeah. hot. Yeah, especially on these metal buildings when you're inside. Yeah, it's true. I got a walnut tree out here in the back, and I can't. That's why I got my car parked out where I don't normally park it because it. It'll look like hell damage. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, the big, some big trees you got there. Do you? Yeah. Now, where are you from originally? You know, I've lived most of my life here in Ath up in Ath Athens, Tennessee. Athens. Yeah, most of my life I was from there. When did you move to Athens? When I was probably about five years old. Oh, you know, parents. Tyler Forrest, the new Tennessee Wesleyan president I, I know i know the name i don't really know him i had him on person. last week he's really really smart oh, what yeah, part yeah. of athens did you grow up in it's it's um it's out in the country um down towards going towards Etowah, and you take a take a right towards um Bo, or not too far from bower road and up in that area yeah Pine Clax Grove, Pine Clax Grove road. claxton yes sir that's exactly right <laughs> Yeah, right you didn't there. think I knew where Clarkson. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, right in there. Sam Cannon was from there. He's an old. Did yeah. you did you ever know him? Yeah. You been here that long? I've heard the name, but I don't. I don't know. I knew him yet. well. He was from Claxton, Tennessee. I think they've still yeah. got to build a fire hall, don't they? They do. Sure do. What else they got there? There's not a whole lot there, though. It's still it's still country for the most part. Wonder what that was originally from, because it was, because I mean it was maybe it was a stagecoach stop or. I don't know. I know there's a lot of history up and through, you know, different areas, yeah. not too far. If you go over the four-way and go down, you go into Lindsdale, I think it is. Yeah. You ever been to Lindsdale? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. It's actually a yeah. little bigger than Claxton. Yeah. I'm yeah, fascinated true. by these small communities that were towns at one time, and why did they go out, and what's, yeah. what's their history? Because they have to have mm -hmm. some. Right. Why just, did one area keep growing and the other one just kind yeah, of Yeah, and usually out there's a Methodist church mm. somewhere in there. Yeah. I don't know true. why that is. Yeah. Are you are you Methodist or what are you? I'm not really. We do uh, definitely live for the Lord. and um, We go to a, a church in Walker Valley, across from Walker Valley High School. It's called Walker Valley Community Church. Yep. All right, where's yeah. that? Real good church, good people. Just try to live for the Lord and, and uh, really just, it's a little non denominational church. And, and, uh, uh, pastor Kenny Rodriguez is a pastor there and uh, just had some real good people. Good service today, actually, this morning. Good location. It is. Yes, sir. They built that in 08, I think. That's correct. Yeah, I'm sure. Right during the, when things went, the yeah. recession, they call it. Were, yes, do you, was, did you feel the recession of 08? You know, uh, we remember, I remember a lot about it. Thankfully, we were really busy still, you know. I, just have to give the credit to God. We, we stayed really busy during that time. Was it big orders or was it more along the line of smaller orders or? It was a, it was a variety. I, I'm not, I can't say that we were just, just slammed as far as like we are at times, but it was just, it was still a constant and it's probably more people redoing their homes than it was new. It wasn't so much new houses. It was more, you know, because when they need, I think part of, part of it is because when they need a roof, they still, they're going to put a priority on it yeah. because and insurance, they got That's got true. to do it. That's right. Things will happen. They'll need insurance. When it's time, if they don't do it, then it's going to be start affecting other things in their house. You know, from sheetrock on down. So, I mean, that's part of it. For I would say, and and uh, but um, we did know there was there was a lot of slow going on at that time. But we we felt very thankful, uh, blessed to keep moving on during that time. So, you're where did you go to high school? Did you go to high school in Etowah or McMahon? You know. That's, I was homeschooled actually. I homeschooled all my life. We so we we knew a lot of homeschool group and uh, 
My parents decided to teach us at home. We did curriculum through there, and I did a little bit at Cleveland State afterwards, but we was, we was homeschooled. Was your, where, where were they from originally? Why did, where did they move yeah. to to get to Athens? They, they both started out in Florida. They were both in Florida, and, and, uh, and then they moved around some from different areas in to West Virginia. Sometimes they moved for work, and uh, so we had a lot of good friends in West Virginia, and then uh, and from there on to how, 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 why the roofing business? Or would you say you're in the roofing business or the metal business? I'd say metal, but there's you got both of them really though, because roofing is the largest presented part of it, and um, but it is all metal, not not shingles at not not asphalt shingles at all. Now we do have metal shingles, but to answer your question, um, I was I was 24 at the time. And just prior to that, I was actually growing, after I got out of high school, I was working with a builder, building some homes, just learning. And then I started actually building them on, on my own for a while. We did and, some electrical Athens? work. Athens? A lot of it was Athens, but some of it was up towards Bonor Bon-or City. Oh, yeah. We did some uh, spec homes up there and a few houses. And uh, did a lot of, um, sometimes we did the whole house, sometimes we just did part. And this was when I was still in my 20, younger 20s. And... Sometimes we do electrical. We did quite a bit of wiring homes, but I had we had friends in Horseshoe Beach, Florida, that uh, re- real good church people. We went and visit them regularly, and and uh, my mom and dad even growing up, we went there. But they had a place where they manufactured metal roofing, and uh, that's really what caused us to think about it because I really liked their operation. I, just, I got a chance to see it some. It just was fascinating just to watch how it worked. And when we were building. We were having to go from job to job to job. And anyway, we were thankful. I enjoyed it, actually. Still enjoyed it, doing some of it. But I just decided I wanted to work in something that was, instead of going to different areas, to where we could try to stay established, work with the community, work with contractors. And so in 2002, and I was 24, we started out just real small. Right, But it's right where we're at now. Um, Mr. Hall owned that building that we're in. It used to be a Lowe's years ago. But we rented the very left side, which was just the warehouse of Lowe's. We rented a little section right there. Is that the first location? It is the first yeah. one. Yes, sir. And uh, what we did, that was just an open warehouse. And we rented it a 3,000 square foot. And we built a little office in front of it, 24 by 14. And just a couple of us. And we opened up. At that time, we didn't manufacture. We were, we were buying it from another company. And they was giving us wholesale pricing so we could build up. And and, uh, and, and we were still, because, you know, when you first open a place, and, and you know this because you're the, the businessman, businessman man that you are, you don't, when you first open a place, there's no re- real income because you're just getting started. So we were still trying to, we were still doing work on the side. We'd work during the day there at the office, and we was building up some, some good contractors. At nighttime, we'd shut it down, and we'd go work. Uh, doing some, we'd wire a few houses, do some, frame some houses, go back in in the morning. So at first, you know, it was all in. It was, uh, it, but we were thankful we, it continued to, to grow until we was able to get the roll formers and start manufacturing. Where do you buy the, where do you buy the metal at? Do you buy them from a metal, a metal, roll metal manufacturer? Is that what? Yes, sir. It's, it's straight from, um, it's U.S. Steel. In United Metals is where we get a lot of it, but different coils come in. So we got to tour the plants. So actually, is where they make the make the coils, hot roll, you know, those rolls right right here in the in the U.S. And so we buy the coils. They're like ten thousand pound coils, and so each coil is um, got a baked on finish That's paint. That's five bobcats. That's about right. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be the yeah. And one coil will do probably five or six houses. Just depends on what size the home is, of course. But and they're already pre-painted, baked on, finished paint. So in our warehouse, we have coils of all colors ready to go. It's just it's just like big rolls of flat steel. What does a coil cost in general? Uh, about fifteen thousand each. Golly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, so how many houses? Five. This yeah, it just really depends on the house. So, you know. So you could have uh, three thousand dollars in just the raw metal before it's even. Put yeah. on a spool. Yeah, and we get them in semi loads. You have about five coils on a semi load, and they hundred grand or sixty thousand. Yes, sir. Yeah, 
And they coming in, they coming in daily, you know, just back to COD back. COD or? No, we've got accounts with them. We're thankful. <laughs> we got accounts with them. They, they'll let us, um, we, we, we keep them paid up, but they'll, they'll let us have some good terms. And, Boy, that's a lot yeah. of, that's a lot yeah. of outlay of cash. You walk in our warehouse right now, you'll find, you know, the, the place full of coils because you have to be ready because we're, we're thankfully removing a lot of it. So you'll have, you'll have the wire. You should, you should. I definitely, you should come by and tour yeah. the back sometime yeah. and see all the co the coils of all the colors ready to go. So we don't want a contractor having to wait. So if they order, if they place the order today, tomorrow we could. It don't matter what size the house is on that, you know, especially the tough the three foot that we sell the most yeah. of. They place it. It don't matter if it's twenty five foot panels. It don't matter if it's fifty foot panels, two inches, whatever it is, and they want it in say in charcoal. Tomorrow we could have it ready for them. We put that coil on the on the machine. It computerized. It'll cut it, to, roll it, and cut it to the exact inch that they asked for, and be ready to go. And uh, we could, boy, take it to them. And so the service is what we really try. But so this machine that you roll them on, is that your own kind of your custom? That you you custom shape it to to the samples you have up on the board. There is that. You got these samples, and you say, "Okay, these these are the ones we can. These are the shapes we can roll out." It's very similar. Now we, there is several different pieces of equipment in there. So one will do one thing, one will do a, another machine will do like the standing seam. But now some of the some of the equipment you can change the dies out to to diversify and change it. Like say if they want it to be a wider standing seam or narrower, or if they want it to have the styrations or the minor ribs, or or you could take that same machine and do a soffit panel. So you can change some of them out. But now there's some that are specifically for that. Like you see the commercial panels with the PBR panel and R panel. That's that's one set of rollers. That's all. You, it's too big of a, that's like 70 foot long piece of equipment. You can't, so you don't really change the dies on that one. But then, um, but some of them you do. So this machine that bends these, I bet that's expensive. It really is. Golly. They could add right up. Yes, sir. And it, and you have to have a variety. I mean, you have the ones for the roll yeah. foreman, and then we have the computerized brakes for bending in the custom trim. So, and you have to have quite a few in order to do the job. That reminds me, I had this guy that was going into the, uh, <coughs> uh, going to sell a vinyl, a vinyl linoleum flooring. Remember that back then the oh, day? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I was sitting there on the, he had a picnic bench in his office or in the showroom, so I was sitting there, and he was a really good salesman. He was just real calm, and you just Roger Goins. I don't know if you ever knew Roger. Roger Goins. <coughs> he worked at Munford's for years. Okay. So this guy comes in. He says, "I need a, I need a piece this long," and, and Roger says, "Well, all I've got these two colors, and this is the only one long enough." to do the job you want. And with Roger's luck, the guy said, you know, I was leaning that direction. This <laughs> happened to be what he needed. <laughs> he had two. Well. I wonder if you'd be, if you'd be, if you just sewed one shape, you couldn't make it, could you? It'd be hard to now because I think part of the thing is, is everyone's home is different. So you yeah. can definitely find something that will work on each style home, whether it's brick, whether it's a log cabin, whether, so, you know, there's certain products just look nicer, and, and then some of it comes down to opinion, too. So one individual may just really like something. Like, we have we have metal slate. Look, it's it's metal, but it looks just like slate. Well, some people, it's just exactly what they want. They see it, and they say, I want that. And and then and then there's some. We've got a metal slate. We also got a metal shingle that looks just like asphalt. It's stone-coated. Well, there's certain subdivisions that are not allowed to have metal, it's just something. It's more year. A lot of it's a lot of that's going away now. A lot yeah. of people are accepting it because yeah. it's become more and more popular, and so many go in that direction. But but they'll still allow that stone coated metal. So I think the main thing is just having something for each home and each individual what their preference is. You know, just like the colors. You know, for years everybody did green and red. You said green, green yeah, and red. forest green, <laughs> yeah. hunter green. Yeah, it was crazy, and I think people got tired of it. So now <coughs> you'll find that. You know, charcoal and black. Black is a big one right now. A lot of people going black metal. Just all this, all for the last year and a half, we've sold more black than we have any other color. So it, it goes in and out in different different fades, and so you, you just have to have what 
each, you know, try to make sure it's what they want for that home. So in since 2002, is that when you started? That's right, yes, sir, April 2002. So that's been, what, uh, 22 years? Boy, it don't seem like it does. 20 years? 21, 21 years. going on, yeah, 20, 21 going on 22. So in 21 years, you've went from 3,000 square feet in the front corner that's right. to eight locations. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, and really, it's... It's really pretty crazy, really, just the, the the growth that we've had, and we've got a really good team. And I'm just thankful. We I think we we try to hire people that are, that are smarter than I am and more qualified. And that and then and then really just have to give God all the credit because we just gradually just keep growing. I think we never really planned on doing that. It's just, uh, I mean, we wanted to keep growing, but we didn't know to what extent. And so from there we went to Chattanooga because we was delivering Chattanooga every day. Practical. We're like, well, now we need a place in Chattanooga, so we opened Chattanooga, and then um, do you set do you do you form the stuff in Chattanooga, or do you form it here and take it there? How's that work? Well, Chattanooga, we do we take it there every day. If they order it today, they'll have it tomorrow. On a, we'll have a full either semi load or gooseneck goes to Chattanooga the next day, and they have all accessories in stock, so that all they need is the panels. But now. The other locations, most all the locations do roll for them. Out of the eight, there's um, we have three in the Carolinas. All the, each one of them have their own roll formers: um, Greenville, South Carolina; Asheville, North Carolina; Mooresville, North Carolina. They each have they each have their own machines, and equipment, and Knoxville has its own equipment. But Dalton, Georgia, and Chattanooga is really like satellite stores because they're close enough where you can transfer. That's right. But our goal is still to give them just to give them real good service. Whoever's down that way, that's why we still have a truck every morning that goes to one goes Chattanooga and one goes Dalton every single morning, and then they have delivery drivers that will take it if they need it delivered from their store to other to the locations. Or do, do you feel like you need to? Do you feel like North Carolina is harder to do business than Tennessee or Georgia? Would you say any of them? Because I've done some work in Georgia, man. Georgia's it's just a it's Georgia's just harder. like pulling teeth. Yeah, it's yeah you, hit it. A, you hit it right, for sure. Georgia's the hardest. It's always a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't care if yeah. you're getting a drink of water yeah, or buying a hamburger or building a house. It's a problem. And yeah. I'm not, I can't put my finger on the reason why. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. I know they have, as far as following all their rules, even with the taxes and the codes and so forth, even sales tax, to follow all the rules is, is more difficult. And we heard that going in it, and it's just, it's definitely true. Our CPA firm let us know when we went to Georgia, it'd be a little more difficult, but we navigated through it and we still, you know, as another one, we were selling to Georgia regularly, but when you open a place in Georgia, you got to follow. And then you got Georgia sales tax. That's Our right. Georgia, uh, you had to fill out a Georgia income tax, I believe, right? That's right. Yeah. Yep. You have to sell it based on each state where they're located and where it's going. So, Yep, definitely, definitely more challenging. Now, North Carolina, the Carolinas have their, their. Uh, but it's not as bad. It's not the I same. I found North Carolina to be more strict on building, on building requirements and codes. Yeah. But navigating their government is a lot easier, and Georgia right. is less on the codes, but harder to navigate their government. If no, that you're makes right. sense. Yep, you're exactly right. Yeah. And I'm not sure how you. I think Tennessee is more. City or community based. It's yeah. it's sort of like, you know, Pikeville and Grootley Lager and Etowah, yeah. Polk County and Ducktown are just are easy to deal with and right. you get into Chattanooga and I waited yeah. on Chattanooga for a permit for like six months. Just for a Did permit. Really? Just yeah. for a permit. Yeah, that's you crazy. Just, I mean, you know, I'm not a, you know, you get to the point where at, at, at my age, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing it that long. <laughs> I think they keep adding new, even, it seems like even locally here, they're trying to bring more stuff in than what they used to, you know. They are. Make used, it more complicated. When I first started, I could meet you on Tuesday and be digging your footing Friday. Yeah. And I can't do that anymore. Yeah. And the customer can't decide in that length of time. Used to, they'd say, I want blue, I want black, I want red, and I want it like mm -hmm. this, and that was it. Yeah. Now that's well, I sort of want it like that. They have too many options, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do have options. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is true. And when I first started building, you you either got a white tub or an almond tub, and the yeah. difference in price was $8. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter which one they yeah. wanted. But right. now, they want ceramic tile with terracotta, mm -hmm. you know, sealed and right. all this back buttered and all mm -hmm. this stuff, and it's just, yeah. the internet has made it so many options. Mm -hmm. They'll probably get on there and find what you they want to show you and say, I want this. <laughs> yeah, and if you yeah. see something on that Etsy thing, mm -hmm. you can't even buy it. I've tried to buy stuff. They don't have yeah. it in stock. I don't even know right. why they, I don't, I've never met anybody that's bought anything from it. Yeah. Do you think business is harder now than it was then? I believe so. I, I, yes, it's harder. Our goal, and I know it's your goal too, is to take care of the customer the best we can. So we try to do everything we can because that's what our that's what our business is. But it is harder. It's more difficult now. You know, to we want to navigate. We want to do it right. If we come up short, we're going to make it right. But sometimes it's still a little more difficult. Or definitely, I, you know, it's, it's more difficult these days. It seems like it's harder to 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 make it and get them what they want. It seems like the customer may be a little less self sufficient than they used to be. Too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. not put. I've not built a house in 20 years. In the last 20 years, I don't. I haven't put their mailbox up for them. Really? Wow. And 30 years ago, that the the, they do the man of the house would have took that yeah. as a personal insult. Yeah, that's something to think He'll about. He'll put that. his own mailbox up. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Huh. So I go to. That's interesting. I didn't think. It's, it's not, yeah. I mean, I even put. I have to call the 911 center and put the the numbers on mm -hmm. the mailbox, and wow. and they won't have a mm -hmm. five, and I have to go to to the, you know, the Ace Hardware and Udawa to see if they've got a five in that and they've quit carrying that line. It's yeah. it's a problem with everything. It is. But everything anymore mm -hmm. is a problem. And maybe it's not more of a problem. Maybe we're just, maybe we get burnt out of the problem. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the answer. It seems like there's more challenges for sure than what I remember seeing before and uh, just have to navigate through it, but definitely... How far is the farthest location? I believe Mooresville. Mooresville's the furthest. It's a good five hours. It's not It's not unreachable, but it's, it's about five-hour drive. So you would have to, do you try to go there once a week or once every two weeks, or how do you do you that? You know, I, it's usually more once every couple months, but not. But I do have others that are going there more often. We've got our, our managers, regional managers. We've got a lot of good leadership that'll that'll go there often. But now we're still communicating with them sure. all the time. So we do the we do the the FaceTime. We do our leadership meetings together with all the managers, you know, every week, every Tuesday morning. And so we're very well connected, and we're talking to them all the time. But I I don't go there as often as what you would think. I I, I need to get there more often. They everything gets so busy. But I would I like to get there more often. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a trip right now. But uh, but we do we do have others that are going there. Where did you learn all this? levels of business. I couldn't do all that. I just build houses and build buildings and I have two or three going and I manage it. But how do you how do you get to that level without being a family member in it? I mean you yeah. you came from that to this and that length of time and is you're not second hand genera second generation. Yeah. Well, you know I really, I really think just one step at a time, but we do have really good help, you know, in hiring the right individuals. We have, it, you know, it's not been easy. We do pray about decisions to make, and there's definitely times I get, get a little too stressed and have to calm down and go again. But overall, it's really because we got, we got some good help, good people working with us. I got, and God's been, been graceful, been kind to us to help that. It, you know, without that, I wouldn't keep doing it. Matter of fact, there's been times I thought, well, I need to I need to slow down, because if I ain't careful, I'll get things out of proportion, you know, because you know we have more important. I'm thankful for work; it helps provide for our family, but and take care of other things that we work with. But I don't want to do it in such a degree that I leave out the most important things, which is you know whatever God has for my life, for my family. Life's too short, you know. If I ain't careful, I'll work the whole thing. And I found this, and I mentioned this to someone the other day, and I know it's true. If ain't careful, we all do this, and I'll do this. I'll, I'll look for, I'll look ahead and say, when I get here, 
I'll be good when I get here. And then when I get there, I realize I'm still looking ahead again. I never really get there. So I need to I always encourage myself and everyone else to think about how life, how short life is. And we have to work, make a living, but there still is more important things than that. And so, um, but to answer your question, it's, it's, I've been thankful to have the right people and have God to help us. We have now about 150 employees and, um, and we have some good leaders to help along. It takes all of us to get it done. So takes everyone, even the person that walk in that says, hello. That's right. That's you right. Gotta, they may be the most important. They're important. They're important. That's exactly right. We tell our team from the time they, the contractor or individual comes in to the time they pick up the order, they've got to be treated like gold because without them, we're, we, we wouldn't even be here. Even the guys back there loading the metal. I mean, you've seen it. And uh, where you walk into a place, they spend all this money on product, but yet you walk in there and they just don't even talk to you and they throw it on each other and they almost like, you know, get out. They don't say it, but you feel like, you know, get out of here. You got your stuff. But so we we t we, we uh, encourage our team to make sure they feel welcome and load them, treat them with respect because they're the last person you're going to, you, they're going to see before they leave your place of business and you want them to, to know you care. And so that's really important to us because it don't matter. Each, each person's important. Whether they're running the machine, placing the order, cleaning the floors, and I'll, I'll clean the floors with the rest of them. You know, I'm not, just whatever needs to be done, we'll, we'll get in there. And each, each, you're right, each person's important. I was over there here probably <clears throat> four or five months ago. I had to get some metal for a garage door. It was an odd shaped bend, whatever. Finally, mm -hmm. I got it. And the guy in the warehouse that loaded me, he was probably the nicest guy I've ever met. And I don't remember what he looked like. Yeah. I don't remember. But he was really concerned with me getting it in my truck and it not blowing out. Yeah. And, and just good. really, because, I mean, that's been five months ago, and I remember. Do you remember? It stuck with you, then. It stuck with me. That's good to hear. That's 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 what we want you to remember. Well, he was there. He was. He must have been a regular. Yeah. I don't even, I wouldn't know him if he walked in, but. Yeah, we, that's good. I, that's encouraging, because that's our goal. We don't always I think the order was $15. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, it was. So insignificant. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's a good point, though. That's another thing we tell. It don't matter if it's a bag of screws or an entire roof. It's important because they need it, you know, and they're going to remember it when they need it. They're going to they're gonna know it needs, needs someone else. And He was so. more worried about it blowing off the truck than I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wrapped it up in the whole nine yards. Oh, yeah. When you say yeah. there's more important things, I've struggled with that question for a long time. Uh, is there? We say, yeah, God. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe this is what God wants us to do. Yeah. You know, I say, well, I want to retire. It's not all about working. It's about God. But maybe God's got me doing this to keep people busy. and to, yeah. Maybe this is my torture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you got a good. Uh, you know, that's definitely. I know God does have different. I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's a yeah. it's a real thought. Maybe mm -hmm. this is. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't be a little. Yeah, I wouldn't take anything away from that because you're absolutely right. There is, I do believe that there's different ones, different areas, and even businesses and individuals that God has to work different areas, and that's what they have for them. I guess my main thing, what I was. Re go back to is even during our work, like even if we work entire life, that we always take time to stop and realize and give glory to God and realize that he put the breath in our life, you know. And so that's what I have to realize. I don't want to work and, and try to absorb everything. I don't want to absorb it all for myself, for one thing. I want it to, If it goes in my hands, I want to be able to pass through my hands. Because it's all his to start with. But just remember, I guess my goal is I have to encourage myself and others to to realize that even if we have to work through our life, that we give God the glory through, through all of it. And he, if he asks us to to stop and, and do something here for some way or stop and do this, that I will heed that call, you know, and not miss the opportunity. I, believe me, I've not done that perfectly. I've missed opportunities. 
And so that's what caused me to recognize, <clears throat> hey, maybe I'm too busy at that particular time. Now, I've been, you know, so that's, I think that's really what I was mainly talking about. I, I know for a fact there's different ones that have different callings. Some might be, uh, um, you know, a missionary their entire life. Some might be working. Then you could reach people while you're working. You could obey God while you're working. You know, I think there's just different areas. Main thing is that we each follow what he, what he leads us to do, you know. And maybe not fight it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Maybe that's the thing. Not not really fight it. Right. But then you say, do I open up another store? Is this the, uh, do I do I close two? Do I? Mm -hmm. You know, there's always these questions. We don't know what to do. Do I take this other job? Do I not take this right. other job? Mm -hmm. There's always. Yeah, you're right. And I'm not so sure even if us thinking about it even makes a difference. You ever wondered that? Yeah. It may not even make a difference. You know, probably. Probably not just thinking about it. I've messed myself up pretty good just thinking too much. But I tell you, tell you the truth, Dee, what I've found, if I'll just take the time sometimes to pray about it, that makes more difference than anything. Because I'll make choices. I've made choices on my own, and I'm like, man, I wish I'd have prayed about that. If I pray about it and I feel the Lord give me, I feel like a, a, it's a, you know, a peace about going forward with it, then I will. But if I don't, then I'm much better off not. And it's the same thing when opening these locations. There's been certain areas I thought about it, and I thought I prayed about it and just didn't feel good about it. And another area, another area, I'd feel good about it, and and He allowed me to do that, and I could see the Lord allowing that to be used in different areas. But again, He's still working on me. I ain't got I ain't got it all figured out. But I know if I will lead, if I let Him lead me in these things, it goes a whole lot smoother than the times that I failed to, you know. And I think sometimes if we try to put a square peg in a round hole and we just keep trying to force it just to win, that's when we're supposed to stop. Right. If it's just not, if right. it's not coming together just real easy, yeah. then you know, you know, like, you know, the location's not working. We mm -hmm. can't get it together. It's not working. We got all these hurdles. Hey, maybe we're just not supposed to do it. Right. In other words, if it's not mm -hmm. coming easy, don't do it. Yeah. If it's Hard to do, maybe quit trying. Yeah, there was time. I guess that definitely gives us time to take a look at it harder, you know. And um, yeah, I've found times that I could tell it wasn't meant to be. I'm like, wait a minute, I need to relook really at this situation, you know. Um, now we'll have adversity come against us on some things, you know, especially if it's, um, you know, a ministry, what have you. And then you have to realize whether it's God prompting us to stop or whether it's the enemy trying to stop us. But there's different. You got, you got to wonder. Yeah. I always wonder. I was talking to somebody the other day. They said, man, I tried to get here. I, sorry I'm late. And I said, hey, man, it's okay. You might have you might have had the had that wreck if you'd have got here. Yeah, you know, that's maybe, true. Maybe it's that simple. Just mm -hmm. uh, I got stopped by two red lights. If you hadn't stopped by one, you might have gotten that car wreck and been paralyzed the rest of your life. Yeah. So maybe we just yeah. let. God knows. Maybe mm -hmm. we just let it go and just sort of. Do our yeah. best and think about it, and if it doesn't fit, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think you, that's the main thing. Do our best, but be prayerful while we do it, because I still, I still know that if we allow Him to control our life, then He will, He'll direct us, and it might not always be the way we want to do it. I mean, I've, I've seen times when I felt to do something totally different. It really wasn't what I had in mind at all, but I realized that if I didn't follow what I knew that he was dealing with me, then it, it wouldn't it wouldn't turn out good at the end, you know. But what's so saying if you want to make God laugh, make a plan. Well, make our own plan. Make our own <laughs> yeah, plan. That sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he because he's gonna work it out. Yeah. What yeah. made you so religious? Well, I think the main thing is is um as far as living for the Lord. And I don't want to ever come across like I've got it all figured out. Sure, but I, I I really do my best to try to live for the Lord. To, and I th growing up, I, I'm thankful for my parents. They did raise me in church, raised me to to love the Lord. But you know, even during that time, I realized that just because they raised me in church, that didn't really make it. That didn't really make me necessarily um, a saved individual. It didn't really necessarily make me right and on my way to heaven because I still had to have that in my own heart. And so I remember. When I was uh, 
12 years old, and that sounds pretty young. That's, that's generally the age. Yeah, yeah, because you could hear it all your life, yeah, but you yeah. don't necessarily commit to it. Mm -hmm. And I was 12 years old, and uh, my mom and dad sat us down, myself and my older sister and brother, and we was at the kitchen table sitting around, real similar like you and I here. And they just began to talk to me. They said, you know, you know, we know we've raised you in church and there's reading in the Bible. And they began to read the story about how there's a broad path and a narrow path. And that broad path, the Bible talks about, leads to destruction. But that narrow path leads to life. And they were just talking to us about it. And, and at that time, they asked the question, and the Lord was dealing with me in my heart. It was more than just mom and dad telling me this. It was something, I felt it in my heart. And they began to tell us, they said, and my brothers and sisters too, it was hitting them. They said, they asked me, they said, so which path are you on? Because just because I was raised in it don't mean I was on the right path, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, granted, as a little baby, you know, you know that I hadn't necessarily had a choice to make that decision, but at this age, I could make that decision. So when they asked me, which path are you on? I got to think, you know what? I've been taught this, but have I really accepted God in my heart? And there was something that came in that room, and I know it was the Spirit of God, and just began to make, just the three of us children began to weep, and we realized we really weren't on that path just because Mom and Dad told us. And that was a change in my life. That was a change that really, I knew that, I, even at 12 years old, it's amazing what God can do. At 12 years old, he, he changed my life, and I've never been the same since. So we... You we, remember uh, it distinctly? I remember it very well, yep. And... Even Who today. did most of the talking, your mother or your dad? I'd say dad probably did, but when we was in our home, mom would still do Bible studies with us. You know, they both did. They both would share things. But, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember that very clear. And it, that was the day, it was a changing point in my life that, because, you know, you asked the question, what caused, and it was really the Spirit of God through my parents that, asked, that just led me there. And uh, I wouldn't take nothing for it because it's a change that has followed me the rest of my life, you know, since I was that age. And, and, and from that day on, believe me, I've not done anything. I've not followed them as, as, to, to perfectly. But my, but I strive to, and I strive to. When I fail, I'm thankful for the mercies of God. They'll pick me back up and allow me to keep, you know, working for him because that's real. Life is too short. Life is too short. I mean, I'm already 46. That was 32 years ago. Yes, sir. Yeah, long time ago. And it's changed me ever since. I wouldn't take nothing for it. But you know what the good thing about it is? It don't matter if I was 12 years old or if I was 46 now and or if I was 50 years old. I'm thankful that God gives us a choice that right then, no matter where we're at in life, he's a merciful God and he'll pick us up. I mean, we might look back and say, wow, I've, wasted, I've lost all these years. But he picks us up if we'll allow him to and puts us on that straight path that leads to life. And there's a peace in it. There's such a peace in it. And I've seen God move for people even recently that they've picked up and, and went on with God. It, it, and we, we don't have to look back at the other things. We can look back and move forward and say, um, this, is, this is what God does for us. He's a, he's a loving God. And <clears throat> some people think that God's, up there, just ready to beat us down every time we make a mistake, you know? I just can't believe God. it. I just can't believe it. No, no, he's not. He's a loving God. He's merciful. I mean, sure, he wants us to, to, to uh, you know, ask him in our heart and then start and change some of th the ways we do things. He don't want us to just keep going on the way we do things, but he's not up there just ready to beat us. He's ready to pick us up, you know? I found in my life, any time I've, I've, I've drawn back from him and have not been where I need to be, that he is the one with his hand outstretched all the time, just ready for me to, to, because he wants to be that friend that sticks closer than a brother, and he wants to be that friend. And I found him always right there, ready just to pick me right back up again. And, and uh, I think that's the reason why I have to give him the glory for anything with the company, with any of it. He's just been, he just been good to me. Have you, are, have you always seen it that way? I, I have since I, since that time. Since that time, that's really how I've seen it. In if I, if, I, if I get too busy sometimes, and I will so, try to do it on my own, and I'll, I'll have to remember that. I'll have to remind myself, you know, that this is what life's all about.
really. That's really, there's nothing wrong with living, and I do, we, we work hard. I, we put in a lot of hours sometimes, but I don't want that to take away from the fact that that he's God and, and he's got to direct my life. And if he told me to sell it all today, I would need to do that. He's not told me to, but this being obedient to him is much more important to me than any dollar that I could have, you know, and it's all his to start with. So if he could, he's teaching me, he's teaching me if he puts it in my hands, let it go out of my hands. Not just, not just about me, but about others, you know, that's a, uh, that might be a lot more than what you asked for. I just you got me started now. <laughs> no, but I, I understand what you're saying, and yeah. I'm with you on it. There's, yeah. A, yeah. there's a, a song in the old hymnals. There's a, a peace that passeth all understanding down That's in my right. heart. What is That's the name right. of that song? You know what, Glenn? Peace that passeth. Peace is down in my heart. What, what's the song, name of it? Peace is down in my heart. Down in my heart. Yeah, I think that is. Do you know the book it. number? You don't know the hymn though. <laughs> Peace that passes all understanding. That's yeah, I mean, very. That's, that's very good. That is. It is a peace that passes all understanding. You you can't explain it. You can't. You can't explain. You could tell somebody all you want about the peace that God gives, but until they accept that, you can't really feel it. You you can't explain it to the fullest. But it's, it's a. It's you know good. the song I like in the Bible or in the hymnals is that song that says. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh yeah. If you if you got up every morning and read that verse, read that yeah. song, that's right. It'd make the whole day different. It would. It would. Because that's because D, that's exactly who he is. So you're right. He, he is a friend that will walk with you. He'll talk with you if we'll let him be our guide. And if if we could start a day out that way, it'd change the whole day. It really will. And that song says, "Leave your burdens with Him. He'll yeah. deal with it." Yeah, that's right. Yep. And so many times we'll try to deal with our own burdens. And, and I've done it. You, we've all done it. But if we just turn it over to him, yep, it changes. It Are changes. your brothers and sisters this on the religious order? I, I'm very thankful. In their, own, in their way? They they are living for the Lord as well. Yes, sir. You know, everybody does it in their own way, don't they? Yes, sir. I there mean, they a, just, there's different flavors of of it. Yeah. Yeah, there you you know you do see yeah you do see different denominations and so forth. And I think my main thing is is just really just try to live for the Lord and follow the, the Bible and try. To, I don't try to put a name. I think that's partly why even where I go we don't put like a don we don't have like a denomination on the door because our goal is really just try to live for the Lord. And I see so many good people that are living trying to live for the Lord don't believe exactly like I do. Just you know, they don't always believe exactly like I do. Well, we can't all think the same. Some people right. like blue, some people like black. Right. So if we can't... Yeah. I built this building for this guy one time. And he, At the end, he gave me a Bible that had his name at the front on the front cover. I thought, how, how ridiculous can you be? Put his name his on His name is on it, yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. got it in there. I won't oh, tell you okay. who it was, but yeah. I thought, boy, how bold, how bold is that? I couldn't do that. Save yeah. my life. Could yeah. you put your name on? Yeah. I mean, I put my name on the bottom right where they they put. Yeah. But it said it opened it up. Had his inside. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Now, also, one of your I I, won't, I don't want to say hobbies, but your your real passion, even though you're doing this Best Buy, and, it, and that's remarkable. I don't know what it would take to operate eight locations. And and remain without diarrhea. I really I really <laughs> yeah. don't know, because yeah. it would be it would work on me because I have some OCD. Yeah. But but you're but you put as about as much time in this Haiti orphanage. Yes, sir. Which is if you don't think Best Buy medals in seven locations and 150 employees is enough. You've got this other thing going on. Yes. What if the roof that protected your home was formed with 50,000 pounds of strength per square inch? Not happening with asphalt shingles. Guaranteed with metal roofing from Best Buy Metals. Our permanent steel roofing is beautiful, competitively priced, and lasts a lifetime. We manufacture to assure the quality you deserve. 
greater strength, stronger roof, Best Buy Metals. Visit our showroom or find us online at bestbuymetalroof.com. Now, the, explain to me this other passion you've got besides this huge business you got. Yeah, I tell you, you're right when you talk about, you know, kind of really being where our heart's at. It's, um, in Haiti, a good number of years back, I even before we even opened this business, I felt that there'd be a time that, that God would have us go to a foreign land. What I made you really think know that? You know, as, as a young boy, just seeing needs out there, it just got my heart. There was always needs, and if I could help in some way, I just want to be a part of it. And so, was there some, any mentor that did that also? Or there was, there is a, there is a pastor, um, Pastor Larry Hamilton, that had been a, a big mentor of mine, and he had he worked in Haiti for, for years and years, and so, I had an opportunity to go with him a good number of times before we even got more involved, and he had been in, he'd been going there for over forty years himself, and had had began a, a work in Haiti, in a, an orphanage in Haiti, and and that's. That's one of the things that's really gave me the opportunity when I was younger and, uh, to get to go with them. And it kind of, after we went a few times, it changes your life. It really does. You go there to be a blessing to the people, but in the end result, always come back feeling, feeling uh, so thankful for what we have here and being blessed by the people there. But, um, but yeah, he was very instrumental on, on being a big part of that. And, there was a time that he, uh, I'd went back and forth with, with uh, Bill Larry Hampton for a period of time, and then there was a time when he felt that like he would not be going as often, you know, getting a little bit up in years and minister, and so at that point is when um, he decided to just kind of turn it on over. He needed someone else to kind of work, to work the area, and so his daughter Julie Denton was still was a big part of that and was going at time, at those times as well. And so he, at that point, he really just uh, allowed us to, to help work in that field. His sister, Julie Denton, his fa their family and my family. And so from there, it was an opportunity that, that in a, in a heart was already in it, that we was able to, to continue to work. And, and, and then when the, um, with the business there, it helps us have the opportunity to be a part of that. And we have such a good team here, they keep continuing to, to work while we're gone. So we would go. So as a kind of, at one point we just, we really needed a, a new facility for the children. So, 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 so did he start at an orphanage? He did, yes, sir. So that's, it's, how does that work in, in Haiti? He just decided he's gonna, I mean, how does he have, how do you do that? I mean, do you, where do you, you know, start? You know, back those many years ago, I know there's a, a good story to it, but back that many years ago when he first went, there was, he, he had went just as a, as a mission with another um, missionary there, and, and the Lord just led him to, to meet with a brother that was in Haiti that, um, with a showbell, and they began to work together close, hand in hand, and, and they, they both was um, they able to do a ministry, even a church, churches as well as the orphanage. And so from there is where it just kind of expired. It wasn't like, he actually, he didn't really just set out to do that, but the yeah. Lord just led it one step to another to where they was able to, to begin to, to do that. When you took over, it was a full-blown orphanage? There was, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of children in that area. We, since then, they did have, the orphanage was, yes, sir, there was an orphanage established there. And, um, and is it government regulated like it is here, or is it just you just set up shop and say we'll take on we'll take kids on? They do have a lot of regulations now, and so since even since then we moved to a whole new area. Um, afterwards, that the Lord allowed us to purchase um, about seven years ago, He allowed us to purchase fifteen acres in Haiti, and you do have to set up with IBSR Children's Services there in Haiti. So it's a whole new location, and. Uh, 
and you have to do it properly. Even here, we have to be a 501c3 set up properly in the U.S. and in Haiti for it to, to all be proper paperwork and all. So I so was able to work through all that, and it was a long process that, as far as building the orphanage. First of all, you have to build the wall all the way around the property because it's required even for the children. I wonder why that is. There's so much... Um, protest, violence in Haiti, and, and really just for the protection of the of the children. Not for kidnapping, just mostly for stray bullets or something? Or At that at that time, it was mostly just so people can't just wander in and wander off the property and, and, you know, keep the children from harm. But now there is, more recent, a whole lot of um, kidnapping. And if violence. I was there now, would, there, would I be seeing a McDonald's or a Burger King, or is it just third world? It's, yes, sir, you wouldn't see any of that available. It's really, it's third world. And in the last few years, it's gotten really, really bad. Just so much to where um, most of the places are, are shutting down. Even like Port-au-Prince, which is the main capital of Haiti, is almost like a ghost town. The businesses, there's, there's gangs that took over the whole country. Before the gangs took over, it was, it was, it was, it was drug, terrible. Drug gangs? Some of that, some of that is there, and some of it is just um, a lot of it is drug gangs. But they will also kidnap Americans or Haitians for uh, they just want to ransom, and so it's just a money thing. So they'll if you don't give them what you want, they'll 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 take you out. And so if you so if you if they caught you, is it like on those shows Locked Up Abroad or something like that, where they they call in and tell your family they're going to kill you if they don't send them. It, Five million dollars, and that has happened a lot here lately. Yes, sir. And it, it, it was more in the last couple couple of years that that's happened a lot. Doesn't that scare you to death? It is something to be very prayerful about. Matter matter of fact, it's a it's a real question because we, for the last twelve to fourteen years, we were going to Haiti every month and and, and staying there for a week to two weeks. Sometimes when we was building on the orphanage, we'd stay there a month, month and a half, or so forth. But in the last year, or last two couple years, we've had to back off and not go as often because it just wasn't a good time. We would we pray about it, and try to feel out when's the right time, because really it's it's all in his his hands whether we when we go. Because the last no, we was there a few weeks ago, and we actually flew into what's called in the Dominican Republic, which is the same island, but it's a different country, and we flew in there and drove for seven hours to get to the border of Haiti, and then we drive another 45 minutes to our orphanage. And it just feels a lot better that way because we're not on the roads of Haiti near as much. Port-au-Prince is the most dangerous part of Haiti. That's where all the... So to fly into Port-au-Prince right now is, is not a very good idea at all. So that eliminated that particular road. So, so, so you, like, gas the car up? and You'd have to rent a car? We have, we've done it both ways. We've, we have uh, rented taxis, but we have our own vehicles there at the orphanage. So, and we have uh, staff, the Haitian uh, staff and our director um, to help take care of the place. So our director quite often will come and meet us. We're able to, he's able to cross the border and meet us in um, Dominican and bring us back across. What are, what are you to him? Are you the owner or are you the head of the board of directors or how does that work? I know it's yeah. a weird question. You know, as far as um, we we have been put in place to take care of the orphanage, so he's he's he'll he'll pretty well follow the guidelines that we ask him to. So we're so who owns it? Um, myself and Sister Julie is really on the on oh. as far as on the paperwork, as yeah. far as as you know over it, and so in the, here in the U.S. as well as there. So you'd so. be like the owner of the yeah of the nonprofit organization. That's right. We put on the we put on it even on the website administrators, just because we we yeah. we really feel like it's God's it's God's work you know we know it's God's work that's over it and so but but that is as far as it's set up that would be we would be the ones to make this so so you got a guy there that that's running it he is he is he's um he's a Haitian guy that we put a uh, good trust in good Christian guy. And so we put we put him in place, but we actually have uh, fifteen staff there that's taking care of the. You're going yeah. to do that what you did to the metal bit to the Best Buy. I can see it keep coming. Growing. Keep if he allows us to keep growing, we will. 
I tell you what, though, you know, it's really about um, this. This here is really about whatever. Well, the, the other is too, but whatever God would would want us to do. But I think the hardest thing right now is to know which children to take in because every day, every day, if we're there, there's children that desperately need a home. And Did somebody bring them, or <laughs> they walk up, or how's that work? Well, yeah, both ways. You know, sometimes they'll get they'll somebody will bring them up, and it'll be um, either an, an aunt or an uncle. The child may not have a any parents, or they might have one parent that can't take care of them at all, just barely surviving themselves. And there's some that we'll see that's just on the streets. Um, we took in um, three little ones that were at a place called the Poor House, and they were the Poor House is right there in town. All it is just a concrete slab. It's not. It's not nice at all. And uh, they're just living there, little little uh, children. Where they come from? A relative. Well, they were staying with an, an aunt that, that couldn't take care of herself. Just drop them off like you would a yeah. cat or dog? Yeah. Golly. And sometimes they'll try to stay there with them, and, but they can't take care of them, so, and there's, there's nobody there really taking care of them. It's just a slab of concrete. and, and uh, so Each little one has their own story, really. So how big is this, is this slab of concrete? Is it as big as this my building here, or is it? It's, it's, it's probably similar to this. This size, it's more like um, in Haiti. You'll see a lot of them more like shacks, more like pole barn structures. This one's a concrete structure, so it would have a concrete, but then it'll have some walls and be divided. But but in, like it might not even have any doors or windows, just like little rooms. But there's nothing in it. Is there any no bath furniture. Bathrooms? Just out back. When I was there last time, I just seen them going out back. No bathrooms really, just wherever they can find. And what are these kids? Six or eight or fifteen? There's, there's some of them with three, some of them four, six, just all different little all ages. Golly. Yeah. yeah. And what's the government yeah. do about that? They don't care? That's, you know, in Haiti, there really is not. The, at that time, there was a government, but they're so they're so corrupt. They, any money that's <clears> sent, just sent there, it's it's being used wrong. And so the, the, the country itself, the people's not lazy. But there's no work to be had, so the people themselves can't even find work. So, if we, but yeah, the government don't take care of them. How big is Haiti? The uh, the population. I hate to tell you wrong. Cause I've looked at it several different times. I didn't go back and look at the population. And Port-au-Prince is where the majority of the population is so crowded, of millions of people. But outside outside the area, you'll see little people living on the side of the mountains and little shacks, cardboard boxes, and I can't remember the exact population. I'll get that to you. I can't remember right now. So you mean like living in literally cardboard boxes? Yes, sir. Under trees and so somebody gets the road. somebody gets pregnant, they have a kid, they are not. They don't, can't take care of it, they'll drop it off at what they think is the poorhouse, which is government controlled. And Is there anybody from the government going to, over to feed them? Nobody's going to feed them. No. Sometimes it Sometimes they'll just stay there for a few weeks, a few nights, and then wind up just end up living there just because it's a place, but there's nobody really going, you know, not unless a missionary comes by and gives them something here or there, you know. We had opportunities to go by there and witness and give them something at times, you know, some some plate meals a few times, and that's really where we come across some of these children. But, um, but many of them didn't come from there. A lot of them are just from people bringing them to us <clears throat> there is um so you, so so this guy mr hamilton started a started a, an orphanage to take these kids in yes sir and how big was his building before you got involved the building itself it was um on that on that property there was a, a good sized church that was built over time and, uh, and and then the building itself had several different rooms i don't it was it probably was around uh, three thousand square feet, but it had just <coughs> different rooms in it, and and that's part of why we did. Did they have regular attendance at the church? They did. I mean, yes, like sir. like Sunday morning here in in Cleveland, or they would. They'd had services a couple times a week, and they dress yeah, up. They would to the very best of their ability. They might walk for miles and miles to go to service. You know, they'll sometimes they'll carry their shoes because they don't want them to wear them out, and then they'll they'll come on in. And, what religion do they think they're following? Or is it just yeah. worshiping God? Really, just worshiping God. This this particular um, where we're at, even now, we have a church right outside the orphanage walls, and 
and uh, it has been based on on the Bible and things that we've but not, not shared not with a, them. Not a label necessarily. Not really a label, no, sir. Just try to live for the Lord and real, real sincere. Matter of fact, <clears throat> just um, just recently, you know, we we'd start the orphanage there on the property, and we got all the buildings built and the orphanage and the mission house and so forth. And during COVID, um, everybody was kind of locked down there too. And so they weren't able to get out and have service, get out and do this and do that. So our children had service right there at the, in the lunchroom, just, just the children and our staff. And they were having services, but right outside the wall, people were hearing it. And they said, man, I want to be a part of the services. But we couldn't really just bring them all to the property because you have the rules. You can't, you, you're taking care of the kids. You can't just let everybody come on the property wouldn't feel good about it so we went there here um right at uh, two two years ago now was when we decided to have a service on the outside of the wall and at the right outside the wall which is part of the mission uh, part of our property there as well and we just had a revival service we invited the neighborhood all over the neighborhood you walk we walked the hill and invite them and uh and we had a a lot of them started coming and uh, we had over 500 coming to the services during that revival and we had over 80 that gave their heart to the Lord and they're just people that lived all over the hills and so after that service we realized we can't just let these people go back to the house nowhere to worship God and so he's able to put up a pole barn type building and they're used to that in Haiti actually is it like a pole barn church more like an open harbor type mm-hmm. building so they've been having services on the outside of that the wall ever since and so and it's been growing people been giving the heart to the lord and, and so that gives them a place um you have to feed them when they come or do you give me anything or is it just the service is yeah. there you know on on uh the one service in the morning we do try to provide them uh, something it's not usually always just real big but we do we have started we have more recently because for a while they was coming and they was they was hungry every morning they was hungry it's almost I mean, like the come. seven loaves of fish You're right yeah <laughs> You felt like God. you need to help them a little something, so we can't. Because it's not them. like it's not like they're coming from downtown Cleveland. That some of them are literally walking right. three hours, I guess, or two, right? Yeah, sometimes they'll come from all over. Some of them are a couple hours. You get a deed hill. for the property? We do, yes, sir. So it's a real. They have a. Do they have courthouses there? They do, yes, sir. They, yeah, you have to get it surveyed off, and and uh, they do it a bit different. The old structures completely different but it's all it's all been done with the with a deed and so forth so that's so they can't just come and take your property really i guess or, or you yeah, just don't supposed, know they're not supposed to i mean it is it is titled over to, to to us and it's under the orphanage name um when the government the government um the way the government is and, and so corrupt, you always wonder exactly because you've seen different things in the past in Haiti that don't go, quite go like people mm-hmm. plan, you know. So you just pray that God has His way in everything. So it, it is done. It is done all right, the right way right now. So we're, they're not supposed to. So you feel somewhat confident in, that they're not going to that you can remain an orphanage. Yes, sir. You're you're a. You, know, you see these ads on TV, of, you know, kids that are starving and. And animals that aren't that need water and stuff, and and you think, was well, this a scam? Right. You know, you, it it right. goes through your mind. Yeah, you're true. It's but true. knowing that you're that you've got a location. Yes, sir. A deed, at least. Yes, sir. You know, somebody could take my property here too. So yeah. we're not saying that. We're just right. saying you're really legit. Yeah. As they say. It is set up right. It really is, and and. And you're exactly right. You always wonder a different, different, you know, whether different organization, what have you. One thing we've always said if, that a hundred percent, if anybody helps with any of the the needs there, a hundred percent goes towards the the need that's requested. If they say I want this to go to the orphanage, a hundred percent goes. Well, if he said I want this to go to the orphanage, but I just want it to buy socks. That's exactly what we'll do. It exactly. goes to socks. We've had we've had some do Pacifics even they say specifically I want their for the school for their schooling or specifically for clothes specifically for food if they say specifically that's what it'll be hundred percent now if they say I just want it to be used in that ministry that gives us some flexibility mm-hmm. but 
it will be. We won't take a dime for our travels. You know, we just don't feel to. It's, what about the, direct, the guy that's running it? Now, the staff that's there. And they got to be paid something, We do right? pay the staff, and they are hey, the Haitians. The ones that are there right now living there, they're all Haitians, and we do pay the staff. Um, and it's not really what you would think, but it's for them. We get it's, They're able to, to stay alive, stay living, and give something to eat. So it's not like they're making... They're making good money or anything like that. It's just enough to, matter of fact, a lot of them there even think of it as a ministry to their own people, and so. So they're sincere too. They are sincere, and they're and they're they're working with the kids and and uh and with the church. And but they do we do take care of them as far as we make sure they get it to that way they can survive too. So they don't live. Do. They don't live on site. There is um, there's a couple of them live on site because the, even some of the nannies stay right there with the kids, but a lot of them have shifts where they'll come and go at different times. But there's a few of them that, that they just, they live right there and take, yeah. Who sets up the shift schedule? Is that the guy that you say is running it? It is, it is, but he talks with with, with, with our help. You know, we have, we see the schedules and talk about it and, and figure out who's coming and going. And so, what's his name? T-Nile. 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 Breeze, yeah. Breeze. Ernzo, Ernzo is really his name, but he had a nickname of T-Nile, but. Ernzo, Ernzo Breeze, Breeze. Mm, really good guy, young man. About how old is he? He's he's forty two, I believe he is forty two. He just yeah. does he speak English or? He does, he does, yeah, he does really well English. Has he ever come to slow. America? He's got the opportunity to come a few times, yeah, and that's and that's really neat because most of them in Haiti don't get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's it's really you know because of being able to work with the orphanage for so long, and. Um, He's got to, the first time he got to come is there's a little girl there that got burnt severely bad, uh, Monica. I can't think of it. Yeah, and it was before we got her, and she was left in the God, hospital. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. And, uh, I can't think of it. But he got I, to come help take care of her. <laughs> yeah, my mind can't yeah. get there. <laughs> yeah, no worries. There's just a lot of needs, but these young people, these um, but yeah, to to go all the way back, circle back around to the kids. They'll yeah. So how home. many? So how many is there? Right now, there's right about twenty, uh, as far as the children go. And, uh, so if if you know you hear of all these people, also, we're trying to adopt, we're trying to adopt, we're trying to adopt. Mm-hmm. Is it harder in America to do- adopt, or could you just could you just call Best Buy Metals? Is it that simple? In Haiti, in I Haiti, mean, they make it really difficult to adopt. Matter of fact. Um, it's so hard, and a lot of it is because of their their system down there at the at the IBSR, even where the Children's Services is. The process takes forever. Matter of fact, we adopted a son from there that lives that, that moved over here. He was his name is Patu. He came to our orphanage, orphanage when he was two, and now he's um, when he got older, ten years old. The Lord worked it out. We was able to adopt him, but it took three years. Three years. Three years. Now, what's their point? A, I don't. A, a, a child that has no family, nobody wants him. Why yeah. would it be hard to take him out of that? I, I just don't. can't get wrap my head around that. You know, I can't either. Now, I really if, can't if either. the family was contesting it, or I can see that, yeah, yeah fine. Right. But if nobody's yeah. laying claim. Right. Yeah, and that's the truth. It's all these children. What, a lot of the children we took in wouldn't even made it an, another month without without the help. Yeah. And it's yet, I think that, <clears throat> I mean, there's a little bit of it that's, there's a little bit of it that's good because they watch them. They want to make sure you're able to take care of them. They watch you. But, you to, but there's some of it's way too far, and it's a money racket, too, for the government. So you think that's what it is somewhat? A lot of it's a money racket. You have to keep doing this, keep doing that. Do this any of those kids that fall paperwork. into tra- uh, human trafficking? That is a part, that is something that, that, that happens at times. So there is a certain part element of what they do that is necessary to make sure that's not happening. Which is but good. They, that part is. That part is. But there's another part where they already know the parents are are genuinely caring for the kids, but yet I think it becomes a money racket. But it's so it is a sad thing. So it is very, very hard to adopt out of Haiti. People do it. I'm not saying I'm not trying to discourage somebody if they feel to adopt from Haiti because we've seen Many do it, even um, even people here that we know. Um, but it is it's my my wife put it this way: it's it it was a harder is harder than child labor for her. The process of three years to adopt was harder than bearing our three girls because of the 
I mean, you just, you just think it's time to bring them home, and all of a sudden there's another paperwork that costs you another six months, another year. And, after a year, after, know. and 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 this wasn't, I'm, I'm assuming this wasn't somebody who just off a whim. This was somebody who had some deeper feelings or connection with, right. and so that would make yeah. three years wait. Yeah, he's a neat little guy. We, well, every time we went, he was right beside me, just working with me every time on the orphanage. He what was his me. story? What was he left there for him? Or can he? He, um, when he was two, his he had a family, but lived way back in the mountains, and they couldn't take care of him. They was they lot. Of, there's some families. There's some that don't have any family at all. But he did have some family. But he was he was just he was so um, they couldn't take care of him. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have survived. And so that's when they brought him to. This was back when um, Pastor Larry Hampton was was over it when he first came. So it took. Um, they brought him when he was two, and that's where he is home ever since so and um but he was a really he is a really neat little young guy he he's now 20 he just got married um what was it when he go to did he end up going to school here he we uh when he got here we finished this through high school um what was it like when he first came here it was a lot different for him there's no doubt about it there's a lot of a lot of challenges because the grades there are are much different. You know, the grades are not up to what our grades would be so far. So he had to really put his mind and set to it. And he did a lot of, he did a couple times, two years in one. Um, but he adapted really well. He, he did. He, and he was already used to us as a family. Mm -hmm. And so that helped a lot. He knew his, he knew, he knew his sisters before because they'd been to Haiti with me several times. So he didn't, and he knew Sister Julie, which goes to church where I go because he, he grew up in the orphanage with, with her there too. So he had a lot of a lot of support in uh while can they here. get on youtube there and and they, there is internet where they can get on at, at times when it's working well we just sometimes you also don't get no internet for periods of time other times you have internet again i mean they have smartphones there like we do here some of them do now they, more recent for a while for a while they wonder who that. service who's the service is from because you couldn't yeah. call one eight call that number and say i'm having trouble with my cell phone yeah, it had to be a. It's yeah. another service there, Digicel, and a couple of knockoff or something. Yeah, yeah, where they're paying for another you'd, line. You'd think that that government there would say, "Hey, y'all are y'all been in y'all been doing this for forty something years, and uh, we haven't had any problem. We're gonna if y'all recommend somebody be adopted, we're gonna yeah. go with that." That would really be nice. It really would. <laughs> yeah, that they, makes too much sense. Yes, I know. I know. It really would. So right now, as it is. A lot of them, from the time they're little, they get a good, they get a good home, they get cl fed, clothed, they get. We, we make sure they go to school, they live for the Lord, they get, you know, they go to church and and and. Uh, they go to school important. in Haiti. They do. There's a little school not too far from the orphanage that we send them to, so they get education. What's it like? You know, their schools there is going to be a lot different. Um, naturally, it's a lot of them are still like open air type buildings. I mean, there there's some closed classrooms too, but it's not. The grade system's a lot different than ours. But they teach them division and decimal they points and all that stuff. Yeah, they still they still get the they get the education. They can, they put their mind to it. They can get a good education. Are the teachers government workers? There's both. There's some that's private schools and there's some that's government workers in the school system. But um, private schools are um, still have to pay quite a bit to get them in. So they're definitely all different. Could y'all take in thirty kids tomorrow if you? If you if you open the door, you know, we can definitely take in more children right now, and and we have the ability, or we have room on the property to build a whole another section of of orphanage, and that is our goal. If um, Lord allows us to, when a couple of years now that the, the violence has gotten so bad that even places you buy materials are shut down, harder to get materials, harder Golly, to get in. We're self destructing, so, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, that's what they're doing. So, but there's a whole section. We're planning on building another section of orphanage so we could take in at about that many more children because the need is there. And to pray about, right now, we took in another one not too long ago, but so we could, we have room to take in a few more for sure, and we will. Um, but if we took in, if we really took in all the ones that the needs are, we wouldn't, we'd be maxed out in space because, so I think that's the, that's the main thing is to pray about what to do because the needs are so great, we feel like we're doing nothing really compared to what the need is. But 
But the way I got to look at it and what we have to look at it is even though it might be nothing compared to the needs, every little child that we take in, it changes their life for good. And so we just keep keep working it, whether, you know, as far as changing their life, gives them opportunity to live for the Lord, opportunity to, to grow. There's another aspect that we're thankful that we're working with, and it's called the nutrition program. So even though the orphanage can't take in all the children, every day on a regular basis we have a nutrition program where we have, uh, they go to different villages throughout the area, and they'll find the children in that area that are really malnutrition. And it's you see them all the time, but you could tell which ones really need it desperately right away. Their hair, their, you could just watch them. Their hair starts turning red. Their their skin and bones, but yet their stomach will swell out when they're why when they're the hair red? Okay. Just from the lack of of the the right iron, vitamins, iron you know. or something. Yeah, yeah. Some of the vitamins it's needed, probably iron. I'm not sure all the, the exact, but you'll see it. Their hair turn red. And and what would what the nutrition program is is it's a it's a peanut butter based product, but it's it's, it's a it's got um med- medicine in it. It'll pull them right out of malnutrition. So what's well, mm. called plumpy plumpy nut. So what we do is is we'll start them on a six week program, and they'll take one pack of that eat yeah, like every a, day. Like a protein bar, or somebody ride before they ride a bicycle or something. It, it could be a, kind of like that. It's actually, but it is like liquid in a pack. I'm not liquid, but it's kind of like peanut butter in a package. But like it's a got gel. medicine. What's yeah. it got? What kind of medicine? It's really the whatever they're they're lacking in vitamins and, and so forth to pull them out. How would you know what they're lacking? Are you? Or yeah. is it just a malnutrition? All, it's really just malnutrition. So, it's, so it's like a yeah. whatever the body can digest real easily or something. Yeah. yeah. Where do you get them? There's a place there that. Um, Another missionary group have started producing the peanuts right on the right on the property in an area of Haiti, and so and then they there's doctors that went in and figured out and come up with the right that will actually be beneficial to the children, and so we purchased those boxes, um, and and every every day right now like we might have a hundred children on this throughout throughout the program, then we'll start some more. It might be 25 here, 30 here, 50 here from different villages. And we have people that go to these children. They don't just give them a whole box of it and say, you know, take one a day because yeah. it won't work out. They spread it out. Yeah. So they have to make sure each child actually eats that before Takes they go one. on to the next. Yep. So the, is it like a, uh, is that all they get? That's that's mainly what we're able to provide them. But now. Does it taste good? It does. It tastes good. It's got a sweet taste to it. Like it's a not sweet bad. peanut butter or something? Yeah. Now, but the question you asked if that's all they get, and that's the hard part. It's really going to be up to the parents. I say parents, it's up to whoever's around them to help keep them. In six weeks, you'll see that child to have a turnaround big time. I mean, just really. But then that helps helps them survive and get back on their feet. And sometimes we're able to help them further. And, and other times it's going to be up to whether that got them past the point God. where they can survive. And, this uh, sounds like, did you ever see the movie Slumdog Millionaire? I do. Is yeah. it similar to that? Because yeah. I'm getting that picture yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's really bad. It, and, and the picture's not, I'm not even telling it like it is. You can't, until you're there and you see the children that barely hanging on by a thread, you know, two, three-year-old, one-year-old. And even this product, it'll pull them out of malnutrition, but lots of times they got other things like TB or um, or worms that's just eating them from, the, you know, eating them up. And mm-hmm. and there's times we're able to help them with that as well. The um, But it's, it's something really felt like the Lord laid on her heart sister julie if you ever get to meet her she's laid on her heart um this this program because it'll take that child from barely surviving to another level to where they have a chance in life and it gives us opportunity to talk to their families too and different ones about the lord at the same time so that's going on almost that's going on regularly all the time and um but there's some other ministries even like there's a place called jock mail which is five hours away in haiti and we've been there a number. There's a, that we we have a school there and a church, and there's there's a little over 200 children in that school that that we take care of. So do you, is this part of you have the school? It is, yes, sir. Yeah, it's just, it is all. It's it's not the same as the orphanage because it's not an orphanage there, but it is the same ministry, really, just what God has allowed us to work. Why with. not have an orphanage there? It would be an opportunity to have one there. Is 
and it's another it'd be like like you said it's it's whether we're whether it's it's time or when it's time or if it's time you know but there's, for right there's now no it's use. just a school it's just a school like a private school it's a private school and a church in a church does it cost them to go there it does not it does not we actually we actually shipped a building there from here it's way back in the middle of nowhere they didn't have a school in the area at all at the time and you drive five hours and then you, you part of that drive is is like four wheel and you drop off on both sides you and then you park the truck and you walk for about three hours back to the and that's where people all over the village there and there's a um and so the building we ship was almost like a tubing it's like a tubular type building more like a carport style tubing but it was um a good a decent size and we shipped it all there and they carried it in like they take the same metal and roll it up in tubes mm -hmm. and carry it on the shoulder they carried yeah. it all in and then we were able to take a group with us and put it together and that's where they have church and and, and some of the classes are in that building and then there was another wood structure they have the other classes different different age groups what's the name of that community jock mill jock mill, jock mill. so you could probably mm -hmm. zoom in on google maps or yeah. something yeah you can zoom in yeah so so where what are those people up? i bet they're just isolated aren't they there's probably yeah. people live there hadn't been out of that town in five years there's some have not matter of fact some of these hikes you go on you find little children that never seen a white person in their life what, and, uh, what's what the reaction do you get the mom are a little a little scared of us you could have fun with them sometimes because you you they don't uh, call you a white cracker, do they? Right. <laughs> that's, no. that's, they don't think bad, right? No, but yeah, there's there's uh, there are some people in Haiti who call us, well, you know, the blah blah is a Creole word blah. for white. So yeah, you'll yeah. hear sometimes blah blah. blah. You know, little blah. kids might yeah. holler it, but they don't necessarily mean anything negative by it. They're who just who is saying, that singer, Blanca, Blanca Brown? Yeah, Blanca is white. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So they will sometimes say that word, but they're not meaning anything yeah, bad no. about it. But but yeah, so there's some of them that have never been out, and there's different towns that some of the um, some parents might have went to, but the kids never made it out. So it's 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 a pretty good ways in there, but it's um it's like you're going way back in time, really. They have donkeys carrying stuff around. Matter of fact, this plumpy nut program, we lots of times we'll load the donkeys down with it and let them carry it back in the woods. Do you ever see some organizations or some events they have even in town? not throwing off of them but they'll have a they'll have an event and to raise money for something that you would probably think is man that's silly they need the money over here a whole lot worse than that i mean i can't even think of what it would be but yeah yeah i mean you know it's, it's sort of, you would have mm -hmm. to sort of get a little yeah I think the main thing is if I see one, I know it's not really going for a good cause. I mean, you know, I might think about other causes that that it really could help. Because, yeah, I think that's one of the things what I meant by even early on when I said that the needs are so great somewhere else, we can't really put even a dent in it. But if we can help just a little bit, everything's God's anyway. So if we could help, if he puts something in our hands and we just let it go out of our hand, you know, just don't don't hold tight to it because you can't take it to heaven with us. And so, and so that's where I'm thankful. Even though it's it's nothing compared to the needs, if we could just help a little bit, then it just makes all the difference. Do they have it. phones there? Some of them have like landlines. The landlines are far in between now. I mean, uh, like I remember, at the orphanage. Not the orphanage. We don't. They because the landlines don't hardly ever work. But they do have a couple of them have cell phones. Actually, they're picking up. We put on. We put a, a satellite um, Starlink on the oh, roof. Oh yeah, well, those are good, mm -hmm. aren't they? It is. It's a it's Thanks something we just to Elon Musk, right? Yeah, yeah. It picks up pretty decent. That's what we're running on right now. That's how we can check on, which we we talk to them regularly, almost nearly every day. Um, and Do if, they have problems there like we have in our business, or is it they don't really have issues? Now you you talking about like at the orphanage and so yeah. forth the like staff in, like, so it, forth. like we'd have in business like an employer or a customer yeah. or parent mad or something like that or yeah. is there problems they could pumping? have their own type it might not be the same as ours but there's definitely some that we might have hired that will have the little issues have to talk through and find out if we could they stay or if we need to get somebody to replace them and so forth so we've had things like that but 
several of them work there considered a, a ministry and their heart is all for the kids and they're just that's what they're making want. is what they're making and they're just working be thankful and do you, yeah. do you think the government is any way like well i'm glad this orphanage because if you didn't have orphanages like you do how would they how could they even manage so they've got yeah. to on some level be yeah. glad you're there yeah they, they seem to be for the most part they do have some regulations and they check on us occasionally and they'll send some some there and uh like were, inspectors or something some sort? of our inspectors make sure the kids are taken care of we have to make sure we have everything in place as far as the right like even even a, we have a doctor that we that's on the, on staff that checks on the kids every week he comes by there does he have to be a licensed real medical doctor or is, i mean is is haiti that strict as far as you have to be a medical doctor, or can it be a guy that yeah. says he's a medical doctor? I mean, they'll for some needs they'll let someone come in and just help with different things. But they do, as far as to have somebody that's actually physically checking on their well-being every every week. They want them to be somebody that they have to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we we have a guy, we a good a good guy. He, he seems to really care, and he checks on them every week. He comes through, and sometimes it's just a matter of a visit, just to make sure they they healthy. Other times there might be someone that's sick. He has to actually evaluate what the situation is so and uh and, and there's also cases where some of the children have different sicknesses and illnesses that we can't bring them in the orphanage right away so we have to start them on a program ah. to get rid of some stuff before they can ah. on the courthouse square at 30 second street is the law firm of logan thompson law since 1965 they have served the legal needs for the good citizens of cleveland bradley county if you've got a problem they're no problem give them a call you have to have sheets for all the babies and all the kids and everything i mean we do. You have to wash the sheets, and you have a laundry room on site. That's true. We have full, some of the full-time jobs actually washing the clothes, washing the sheets, and uh, taking care of the kids. So yeah. this is the this is the. Hey, Glenn, can you zoom in on this? Yeah, that tells some about it right there for sure. Um, we, the new orphanage, we was able to build custom bunk beds, mm. and. Uh, You'd have to have a permit here, Cleveland. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five permits. Yeah. Yeah, it does take quite a bit to keep it going. They got some full time cook in there and So um, all of these kids still there right now? Or yes, sir. It, they are. They are. Who's this guy here? That's Davison. Davison. Uh huh. Yeah. So you don't have, oh, so this is a full, this is a, this is the orphanage right here? It is. What is that? It is. I'll tell you. Zoom in on that, Gwen. This, when we moved from the one orphanage to the other, we was renting an orphanage for a little while. We was renting a building for an orphanage for a little while, and that's what's on this one. But we have a, we have a, the very new facility is not on this particular brochure. Mm -hmm. I'll have to show you some pictures later on my phone. But I've got some, the new facility. It's, it's, it's turned out really well. Um, now this one, which one is, is the director? Is he in here? He is not there. Um, this is all just the, the Americans. So this is me and my wife, and this is okay. Sister Julie. And uh, now her her dad ha Hamilton was he from Cleveland, or where is he? Where was he from? Well, Teleco originally, Teleco Plains, but he does he he pastored um, here in Cleveland in Udawal for years, and then we moved. Um, to the to up there in Walker Valley. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. so he's still alive. He is. He is. He's uh, turning seventy. No, he's turning eighty. He's turning eighty. Eighty um, years old in November. Yeah, he's a, he's a great man. I been a blessing is to my it, life the entire my entire life. So she married a Denton. She did. She did. Yeah, her husband passed away in COVID. COVID actually, but mm -hmm. how did how did how did your how did did you have anybody? That, that died from the orphanage that had COVID. No, we they some of them got did did get COVID and get sick, but none of them passed away. They actually uh, they actually all they did do a lot of the 
what we did here, you know, schools were shut down and so forth, so all different ones got sick, but they they were able to all pull out of it. Yeah, some of that in there shows the nutrition program and different things, different yeah. ways that people's helped. And uh, we've got a lot more different uh, literature that would tell, give more information on that. Mm. Which is more important, to sponsor a child or to, or to, to do the nutrition program? Of course, how could you sponsor a child? How could you ever, how could you ever stop that if you wanted to? You couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't do it mentally, could you? Well, <laughs> it'd be easier to say, send us, mm. send us five hundred dollars. People don't all different ways. That's a very good point. You know, some would like to know that it's specifically going. They could to a certain child for every month, but, but some will just do. Hey, I just want to put this amount towards it or this amount towards the nutrition program. Yeah, because it's all use support. What if you're you're five years old and you're sitting next to a guy that has a, a prettier face than you do, and he's getting eighty dollars a month and you're getting twenty? Yeah. You know what? We we always just make sure that we take up the slack on wherever. Like the child, if we bring him in the orphanage, we're gonna make sure they're took care of. But everyone's anyone that decides to help is a huge benefit because then we're able to help more children but we're not going to let this child go hungry if he didn't have a as much of a sponsor because we'll yeah. just take we'll just take up the slack you know because of whatever it takes to make sure but the more if some the more that is a help the more we could help that's just kind of the way it is but we're not going to and if somebody decides they can no longer help you know don't feel they that income's coming in to do that sponsorship they could they there's no obligation if somebody backs you know sides i need to stop you know it's happened it's it's happened at times do you are you strictly on on uh, donations we as far as it's either donations and again um whatever the that different ones here and our church is a part will help at times and our business will, will help whatever Whatever it takes to keep it going will help. You could run. You could there in theory run out of money. Yeah, yeah. Could it's, you? it's just God's always made a way, and we've been so thankful for that. Because we'll. But I mean, in yeah. theory, right? Yeah. You could. Yeah. Just run out of money. Oh yeah. We need a new roof, or the electric yeah. bill went up, or. Yeah. Yeah, and it is a balance. So knowing when to stop and when not, because. Even to, even while you're there, there's all kinds of other needs that we could help people with, and we do. At times, we might take care of this widow's, um, you, you know, food. We'll do sometimes. We'll sometimes we'll take a whole group of and, and provide food for some widows and different ones. But that's on the side of the orphanage. If the Lord, if if the if we're allowed, if we feel we have the budget and we're able to, we'll do that often. In different needs. And then other times, you have to say, wait a minute, I just need to stop for a minute unless God deals with me because you'll take on too much at one time. So yeah, it's a balance. It's a tough balance. You actually. can't give the farm away. Right. Right, because then you might not be able to help with the need over here, and you know the kids were committed, were committed to take care of them, and we're committed to whatever God wants us to do, really. So He'll provide, and that's what I'm thankful because He always has. Um, but with the provisions there, we could do even more. You know, whatever provision He allows us, we'll just go that. We'll just keep going that route. It's almost like a. So we really have no places in America that are like this. I hadn't seen it to this extent. There, you know, I know that there's people here that have needs too, and we're and we're, we've got to be mindful of that, and we'll help different ones here. But this, it's a whole new level. If you go here and you walk, you don't have to walk far at all. You see, and I, I'm not even painting the picture like it really is. If you walked off the, you walk down this trail, you you'll see people living just in mud huts, cardboard boxes. Some of them hadn't had a meal for. For who knows how long, and some of them will eat. They'll even they'll even make mud mud pies sometimes for their kids to eat to keep their stomach from feeling hungry, but it don't give them no nutrition. And when you say them. a mud pie, you mean literally a, a mud, mud pie. pie. They do, yeah, they do. You'll see it. They'll make these little mud cookies, and it just makes them stomach feel a little full. So they, but it don't take care of me either. Does it go through the system? I guess mud. It, it yeah somehow it does it don't it, I know it's, it can't it can't be good. Kids for used to eat dirt. Right. Yeah. yeah Probably so. got vitamin B in it. They might get something out of it. Yeah. I'm not real sure. But I, I wonder how they came up with that idea. You're pretty desperate if you do that. Yeah. I'd get out and start shooting people. Yeah. Whatever it took. To and I think that's what's happened. You know. I guess that's it. It's, but we just unlocked the reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now you see more of these 
big groups are doing it that's not really family related. It's just like groups of just people just don't care, just heartless, you know, and they, they just run in the country. The government's been ran out. There is no government now. The president got shot a couple of years ago, and since then there's been no government. And that's how bad it's gotten the last couple of years to where it's just gone. God's the only one that's going, you know, it's, it's just the country's gone really bad right now. I'm thankful that the children are being, t that they're doing good. You know, we was there a couple of weeks ago and they're doing good. And, uh, but the country in general is, is in bad shape. It gives us a lot to be thankful for. I mean, a yeah, lot even as bad for. as it is here, I guess if it went over there, you'd, of course, that doesn't mean we can still have to take a whole lot of garbage here just because it's better there, but it right. is better than there. Yeah, yeah. So what's the biggest thing you need is for regular, regular donations that you can depend on? Is that if somebody more felt important? To, if somebody felt mm -hmm. to that, it would 100% go towards the orphanage and to whatever need they ask for it to. And we're not, um, you yeah, know, we've had, we've brought things over there before, but most of the time it's harder to bring stuff. Like we'll, we'll usually purchase the clothes in Dominican and bring them over. And other needs, it's harder to bring items there because of trying to get it there. So the, um, but we have done some of that. But most of the time, if somebody feels to, to, to give something, and there's different, you know, different ways to do it on, on the, you know, through PayPal or the website. But if somebody feels to, 100% will go that direction. For sure. Do they, what kind of money do they have? You know, they have their own, um, their own dollars there, but the, they're, they're called goods. And goods? the goods are worth very, very little. You take a whole wheelbarrow load and it's not going to get you anything. So you take one, what they call one good, it takes five goods. Five goods will make a Haitian dollar. Well, it takes 27 of those to make one of our dollars. That's how bad their money's went way downhill. So it took a so whole lot of So what do they do, just barter and lie, cheat, and steal to get to there's survive? A that, there's a lot of that going on. A lot Golly. of them try to do whatever they can. You know, they'll, they'll, you'll see some burning, burning oh, charcoal wow. for the cook stoves, and they'll sell the charcoal. You know, they're burning wood down, smoldering it, and they'll try whatever they can. There's very little work. I bet there, I guess there's no work. Is there any yeah. real rich communities? There's certain areas that will have some that you could tell they have they've got something and it's either used to come from the government workers or the or the uh, or now it's probably the gangs. But the there are certain areas. There. What yeah. are the gangs? Where are they getting their money? They're probably they don't need money. It's just they got power. Yeah, and they, and they are the the kidnappings, they're ransom. People are still giving them money so they don't get shot and so forth. Because somebody will probably take over Haitian, some government. Yeah. but you couldn't. The guy needs that right now. It needs somebody to take over, but there's nothing there for another country to to want. To it. want. Yeah, that's except why the it's Dominican not. Republic, and they don't yeah. want it. They just don't want anybody else to have yeah. it. Probably. Yeah, Dominican's doing fairly well. That's what's so crazy, right across the line. And so, and they're and they're really a different country, same same island, but different country. I had a friend of mine that bought a piece of property there. Disney World was going to buy it, or some kind mm -hmm. of thing. He thought, and I don't think he's ever got his got his money back. Really, yep. just didn't come out good. Yep. Hmm. But, yeah, yeah. Well, this whole world, you know, the whole world could use it. Could use a real honest trustworthy, smart dictator, and that would solve everything, but there isn't such a person. Right, yeah. It is true. You make me yeah. want to donate to to the arms of hope. <laughs> Somebody yeah, needs to, to do that. You can't yeah. send them money in a right. check because right. it would be, Yeah. you'd be better off sending them, you know, a bag of oatmeal. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, if you send it to the government, you just don't know where it's going. But does they have <clears> regular <throat> mail there? Does the mail? Do they have a mailbox there? They open the mail every day. They don't have a mailbox. They have places they can go, but it's very, very difficult right now. You could send some mail, and it will go through, and they have to go to Port-au-Prince and find the the place God. to get it. But it's not. Even so how do you sure donate? Thing. How do you how do you get stuff to them? Now there is, as far as ourselves, when we're not traveling, when we're traveling there. Well, most of them bring it with us, but. There is um, right across the Dominican line is where we have to send it to a bank right now that our our director can go get it and they're able to buy the food. Where's he buy it the in. food at? Hey, in Haiti. A lot of it right now is 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 across the Dominican line because so many of the places in Haiti are shut down. You can't hardly 
if it wasn't for him being able to go across the Dominican line, our kids would be in bad shape because that's where he gets most of the food right now. So he has to go across there and get the money, get the food, and that's wagon right. train back? Yeah. What kind of cars he drive? We, we bought him a, a, a Toyota, and so he... You didn't buy him a Tesla, new no. Tesla truck. <laughs> no, it's... Because it, that would have blown your whole cover. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, it, it, and, and yeah, you buy, you buy a car there, and it's going to look really old really quick because the roads are off the way they are. So, yeah, he, it's not... I want a new vehicle or anything, but he's able to get get by and uh, and get what he needs. And sometimes it breaks down on him. We'll get it fixed and go again. But but he usually goes across that way and gets the food. And, he's so. got a big job. He really he? does. He I does. mean, just think about it. He got a lot of responsibility, and he he, he puts the pressure on him. Think he, about his day tomorrow compared to ours. Yeah. I thought I, I was dreading my yeah. tomorrow, but I'm not dreading it anymore. Yeah. You speak about tomorrow. When you say tomorrow, it's, that's exactly. He's, he's having to go tomorrow to uh, a, a border that's much further than that border because the border that he's been going across is locked down right now. They shut that border because there's too many protests and violence. So he's having to... What, what violence are they protesting? The, um, a lot of times it's the gang starting up the problem, just kidnapping and causing problems. They'll shoot a couple people right there on the border and then they'll shut the border down. And uh, So he's got to go to another border? Another border. It's about five, hour, five hours away to get across to the bank to get the, the mail we just sent and then get food and then come back. But he's also picking up that peanut butter, that, that medicine out of peanut butter at the same time. So it's it's in, it's not really a safe trip for him either. We just know that God's got to watch out for him and he does what it takes to take care of the kids. So, yeah, he needs a lot of prayer. It's, it's mean, not he, easy task. I mean, he, for his car to not <clears throat> be hijacked, is, what are the odds that somebody will <clears throat> rob him in the car tomorrow? Is it 50-50? Yeah. Well, a lot of them won't make that route because they they're worried just about that thing. But I really I really know that God's had His hand on them, and that's what makes the percentage different. Carry a gun, or would it do? It wouldn't do any good yeah. against machine guns. Or... It really wouldn't, because the whole gangs are so. I mean, there's there's like there's hundreds of them. So, but really, I, I know He relies on God's protection too, and that's really what it is all about. Even when we go, we we have to rely on that, and we've not been going as often, been prayerful about when to go, but we have to rely on just God. If God gives us a piece of that, it'd probably be better off to send the money that it would cost to go there to him to use. Because it sounds like he's handling mm -hmm. it. He does well. So why well. why even go? Just let him handle yeah. it and send him the money that. It's had to happen a lot that way this year. We've been four or five. We've been a few times this year, but not as often as we used to. So, but there is a time they do need some extra support there, just to show they because he can get he needs oh, he needs some support, just knowing that we're. And the kids do. The kids get, they're just like our kids, and they know that. And we get there. If we don't go for a while, they, they're like, why? They don't know why we ain't. So we oh, we get to spend yeah. a lot of time with the kids so over there, too. That's factored in, too. Yeah, it? yeah. But there, but you're right. There's times we just have to send it. And it's been the most difficult thing to send it. When you leave those kids come back here, you feel like you're leaving your kids, you know, because you get pretty you get attached oh, to each little, yeah. each little life. But, but, but we're still we're thankful. God's been... He's been kind to us. He's been good to us. And, again, really can't take any credit. He's he's allowed us to just do a little tiny bit. And, and If um, somebody donates, who they mail who they mail it to? you got a couple options. Okay. Um, our corporate office is at, is, 16, is on here, 1652B, South Lee Highway. Oh, yeah. That's where a lot well, of— Well, you know it's going to yeah. the—you know it's going to a legitimate place. At least yes. you know it's going right. Yes, sir. But you could also get on the website and do it through PayPal. You know, it's 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 arms of hope children dot org, and there's a PayPal account. If somebody does it that way, it'll go straight to our. And, I, and I'll 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 see it there, and it'll hundred percent go to the orphanage. We can put it on the screen, can't we, Gwen? He's already on it. Well, I tell you what, this is great work you're doing. It really is. We just we're thankful to be able to to go and. And, uh, and again, a lot of the team, even back here in Cleveland, allows us to be able to go just because they're a big, <clears throat> they're a big part of that. And uh, he's been good to us. Well, I tell you what, I'd hate to go against you on anything. I don't know, dude. I, I appreciate you talking to me so much. It's been a. Yeah.